our most holy father, our God, our King. You are so wonderful to us, and we thank you so much for being here with us today. And we know that you have something planned for us today that will be educational, which will strengthen our hearts and bring us closer to Jesus and make us better children. Father, bless this time that the Holy Spirit will teach each and every one of us what it is you want us to learn and what you want us to see and how you want us to change our lives, if anything needs to be changed at this time. So, Father, bless us and guide us and continue to love us as we are learning to love you the way we should. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we're starting a new series, and this one is about Jesus himself to help us understand Jesus a little bit better so that we can know what it is that Jesus is wanting from us. And it's interesting how as we grow older, these seem to change. You learn stuff, you gain understanding, you realize some things you thought were right were not right, and you abandon those. And when you abandon that particular something, a lot of things that were built on that have to be reevaluated. And we go over and over and over this. Those, anybody who has been in the body of Christ for any amount of time has had that happen. It just does, and it's okay. And as long as we can keep an open mind about that, we will grow. And we will continue to grow. And our open-mindedness is once the Holy Spirit has proven to you that something you have is false or something you don't have needs to be added, you do it immediately. You don't wait. You don't whine. You don't cry. You just do it. No matter how hard it seems to be, you just do it. And we learn that as we go through our lives. You know, one of the things that we're going to discuss is different aspects of Jesus' life. And we're going to start out with that Jesus was fully, totally, completely, without anything left out, human, just as you are the, a human. Everything that we had, he had. Everything that we feel, he felt and still feel. But the... I have a little sheet of paper here of what um, this sermon is kind of based on, and I'm going to go ahead and just read it to you. A couple of reasons. It'll set the stage for the next few sermons as well. Plus, I need to learn to read better from the pulpit, so you guys can put up with me. Okay. Fully human and then some. Jesus was born in the normal way, grew in the normal way, got hungry and thirsty and tired, ate and drank and slept. He looked normal, talked in ordinary language, and he walked in the normal way. He had emotions such as compassion, surprise, sorrow, and apprehension. We find those in Matthew 9:36, Luke 7:9, John 11:38, and Matthew 26:37. He prayed to God as humans need to. He called himself a man, and other people called him a man. He was a human being. Lots of times as Christians, we spend so much of our time looking at the Jesus ministry, that Jesus that we see, and all the things that he did, the miracles and everything to prove that he was also God, that he was the Savior of the world, that we sometimes forget about his human side. And we key in on his God side so much that there are times when we forget that we can go to him with anything, and he understands. That when we cry, he cries. When we're upset, he's upset. When we mourn, he mourns. When Donna finally saw her husband pass, Jesus cried with her. He felt her pain. He knows exactly how she feels. People died in his life when he was here. People he loved very much. He feels what we feel. But Jesus was sure such an extraordinary human that after he ascended to heaven, some people claimed he was not human after all. Second John 7. They thought that Jesus was so holy and that surely he would have nothing to do with the flesh. 
with its dirt, sweat, digestive functions, and imperfections. Perhaps he merely appeared to be human in the way that angels sometimes appear as humans without actually becoming human. That is a terrible, terrible heresy. And it's one that if you ever hear it in the church, you really should stand up and say something. You should never allow that heresy to go because that's Satan's way of making us feel like God. Jesus really doesn't understand. He wasn't human. He was God. And he came parading as a human. That's not true. He was human, 100%. He felt what we felt. He knew, knows what we know. He felt the hand of Satan. He felt the hand of people lying and cheating, wanting to beat him. He felt the hand of all this, everything we feel. He understands how we feel when we grow up in a home that isn't the way it was supposed to be. All the things that happen to us, he feels that. He knows how that feels. He understands our heart. He understands our mind. He understands our soul because he lived it and is still living it. So the New Testament makes it clear that Jesus was really a human. John tells us the word became flesh, John 1.14. He didn't just appear as flesh or clothe himself in flesh. He became flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, 1 John 4.2. We know John says John because we saw him and touched him, 1 John 1, 1 and 2. So scripture tells us that, John, that Jesus was flesh and blood. He bled. He hurt. He was a carpenter. And I can, as a carpenter, I can see Jesus building something. Somebody distracts him, and he smacks his thumb with a hammer. Growing up with construction people today, at least when I grew up, most construction workers were Christian. Yet when you hit your thumb, the stuff that came out of your mouth was amazing. And then we're all standing there looking at him. And he looks up and he goes, oh, that wasn't too good, was it? But Jesus, on the other hand, even though he was totally human, when he hit that thumb, I rather doubt that you got a lot of foul and nasty language. And there's a reason for that. What you would probably get was, that's probably what you would get. And as a Christian, that's what we all try to do when things happen. When you're around a whole bunch of construction workers that use foul language, it tends to rub off a little bit, especially in moments of pain, suffering, surprise. See, but Jesus had something that we don't have fully yet. And it helped him to live a sinless life. Going on, Paul said that Jesus was made in human likeness, Philippians 2.7. Born under the law, Galatians 4.4, 4, in the likeness of sinful man, Romans 8.3. Since he came to save humans, the author of Hebrews reasoned it was necessary that he share in their humanity, Hebrews 2.14-17. Now, I'm standing out from behind this thing now because what I'm about to say is really hard to say. But could it be that since all human hearts tend to be wicked and evil, did Jesus' human heart be the same? That's something to think about. Could it be that the God of the universe came to earth became totally and completely human, even down to his heart. Could that be? Was he that human? The Bible says he was human, totally and completely human. Later on, we'll also see, not in this sermon, but another one, that he was totally and completely God, too. So that's just something to think about. I'm not saying it was. Because I don't know if it was. I, was I, 
I'm not God, I can't say. But it seems reasonable that that was the case. Going on. Our salvation depends on the reality of Jesus' humanity. His role as our intercessor or our high priest depends on his experience as a human, Hebrews 4.15. Even after his resurrection, Jesus had flesh and bones, John 20.17, Luke 24.39. Even in heavenly glory, he continues to be a human, 1 Timothy 2.5. So even up in heaven, his human part is still there. He still feels all that we feel. He knows all that we know. He understands all that we are. Did Jesus have to go before, like Adam, the tree of life and the tree of good and evil and choose? If he's human, he had to. He had to be allowed to make that choice. I don't know when a child's mind gets to the point to where it can actually reason right from wrong. But when that first decision came upon Jesus, he was put before those two trees. We know which one he chose. God the Father knew which one he would choose. Because Jesus was fully God. He had something in him that we are working to have, that we ask for daily from our Father, from Jesus, from the Holy Spirit. And that allowed him to live a perfect human life, no matter what his heart might have thrown up. He was ready for it, and he dealt with it right away. Our heart does a lot of things, some good, some bad. God says that the human heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? He can. God is the one who knows our heart. And wickedness is really just a selfishness. Do things for our own selves. That's why we do things. I knew an old guy once that used to say there was the way of get and the way of give. Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King, our big brother, the one who loves us so much that he gave his own life, was totally and completely in every way that you and I are human. God the Father didn't hold anything back. Jesus' love for us was so great that he was willing to deal with that. You know, when Jesus was 12, he went and talked with uh, the priests and whatnot in the temple, and he just befuddled them at how much he knew, how much he understood. And that is his God half coming out. After all, he was the creator of all things. There was nothing he doesn't know, except possibly the time of his second coming. The Father may not have told him that. We don't know. So here's Jesus on earth, going to make that first decision. That first, I'm going to take that toy, or I'm not going to take that toy because I want that toy. That's the human side. The God side, which is there, is like the little devil and the little angel type thing, is speaking out loudly, love your father. He knew who his father was. Love your father. And Jesus decided that he was going to love his father at that point. And from then on, he had something that none of us had, and he had it before, but now it was for sure. He loves the father with all of his heart, with all of his mind, and with all of his soul. He made his choice. And he lived by that for the rest of his life. Now, you know, my personal belief is I don't believe he, there was really any chance that he would not choose loving the Father. That God side was so strong, so powerful, so ingrained in him that the possibility of him actually choosing sin was got to be zero. However, 
He had the choice. And we all have made the choice. We go about our lives living by the choice we have made. Everybody in this room has accepted Jesus as their Savior. Everybody in this room has chosen to love the Father. Now, none of us love him perfectly yet. We battle our old self constantly, and we will up until the day God comes and takes us. But there is nothing in our lives that the Lord Jesus does not understand. There is nothing we can't talk to him about, to go to him with, to ask him for help with. There is nothing that we have done or feel or think or can do that will surprise him. He was totally and is totally and completely human. And when we understand that, and if we truly believe that, he becomes big brother. I don't know how many have a big brother or a big sister, but I had two big brothers. And they took care of me. If there was somebody bothering me, that person didn't bother me anymore. If something was going wrong, they took care of it. I looked up to them, and I still do. I have wonderful feelings for my big brothers. Well, Jesus isn't only our big brother. He's our Savior. He came to our planet many, many years ago. And he did what he wanted to do. And he did it because he wanted to, not because he had to. He wanted to. He came to earth and he chose the Father. He lived the perfect life. Whenever the human heart stood up, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do the will of my Father. He says it over and over and over Scripture. Not your will, your will. Not my will, your will. Not my will, your will. Not my will, your will. To say that, his will had to be a little different. Did it not? Now, this is all stuff to think about. Jesus was totally and completely human. And he was totally and completely God. Something we can't fathom. I just, don't, I just can't totally understand what that actually meant. But I do know that when I look at Jesus as a totally human being who went through, felt all the sexual things, all the anger things, all the I want things, all the oh, woe is me things, and everything that I've ever felt, he has felt it, and he has beat it. And I know how he beat it. He loved the Father more than anything else. And that's the one thing that he had that we all ask for in our own way constantly. Do we want to beat this human nature? Yes. And how do we do it? By loving the Father. Because then we realize that his way is the only way. When you're angry about something, you stop being angry. Take care of the situation. Deal kindly with whoever you're angry at or whatever you're angry at. Is somebody doing you dirty? Okay, so what? We are living in a physical world, but we are spiritual beings. I think that's how Jesus saw it. He was a physical being, but he was living the spiritual life. His body was there because something had to die for us. We need to understand that he gave his life. You know, when he was getting ready to go to the cross and he was praying in the garden and he was asking God to make, if there was another way to do it, that was his carnal side. That was his human side. Because it wasn't that he didn't want to do it. It was that he loved his apostles. He loved being with the people, interacting and spending time with them. Uh, whatever they did. They didn't always run around preaching. I'm sure they played games and did all kinds of things. Jesus loved his people. And he wanted to spend time with them, as he was. That's my view of what was being said there. Some people say, oh, well, Jesus was failing because he didn't want to do what God. No, I have nothing. He wanted to do it. 
and he was going to do it. He just wanted a reprieve so he could play with his buddies some more. I really believe that's what it was about. I don't believe he wanted to get out of it. He was human. And that human side, we just love to play with each other, to do things, go camping, fishing, work in the yard, listen to a sermon, talk about the insanity of the sermon. Pastor's nuts. He's talked about all kinds of weird, crazy things today. But the idea is we need to think. We need to pay close attention to what Jesus says. He wrote this whole book for us. And there's lots of stuff in there that, to tell you the honest truth, you read it and it makes no sense whatsoever. You look at it and you go, hmm, I wonder about that. And sometimes it's nothing more than you have to understand what it meant to the people who received it. And then it makes sense. Sometimes the translation is messed up because whoever translated it didn't do it. So hopefully you've got five or six or seven versions that you can look at and get a gist of what it is. Sometimes just one word is translated into an English word that doesn't mean what that word meant. It's all kinds of stuff. But the fact, and it comes back down to it, is that Jesus was 100% in every respect that you are and still is human. And just like you, he had the Holy Spirit in him. He was fully God. We are God, so to speak. We'll never be God, but we have his spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. And that spirit gives you the ability to live like Jesus lived. It is possible. Not likely, but possible. Because we are stuck in a world where Satan is powerful. And he is picking on us continually. He puts thoughts in our minds. He does things that just almost cheating. And we have to allow the Holy Spirit to wake us up at those moments, to see what's coming and to deal with it the way Jesus did. What did he do? He went to his knees. Always went to his knees. Talked with the Father. Prayed. Who knows? Complained. We don't know what he said to the Father all the time. We only have some of his prayers recorded. Lots of private prayers that we don't know about. His whole life, we know very little about his younger life. We know he was born. We know he went to see the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests once. And we know he did a few other things that they talk about. He was a great kid. Had a wonderful life. Enjoyed himself. I'm sure he went out and played in the woods from time to time, went swimming, went fishing, did his chores, played with his brothers and sisters, played with his friends, went to school of some kind. Who knows, maybe he went to a seminary school, went to the synagogue on the weekend, every Saturday. You know, he did all the things that a Jewish boy would do. He was human. He had to go to the bathroom sometime. When he was a baby, he had to have his diaper changed. He was human, totally, completely human. Nothing held back. So what I'd like you guys to take home from this insanity today is that Jesus truly, truly, with all of his heart and soul and mind, understands your feeling. He understands how powerful the human heart is. He knows how strong Satan can be. He knows how strong our own desires can be. He knows all of it. He is aware of everything. There is nothing that can happen to us, has happened or will happen, that he does not understand. And he is willing to take it all upon himself so that one day we can stand before the Lord God Most High and he can look at us and say, this is my son and my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. And that's where we're all heading. It's a long, hard road. Larry's there. He's done. He's made it. And depending on what happens after death, God might have already said to him, well done. 
Welcome to the kingdom. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. We don't know. But I know one thing. My view of my Lord is different today than it was a week ago when I got assigned this message. I spent a whole week observing humans, just watching people, watching parents with their kids. I'm sitting there, and there's a young couple and a little boy, and he decides he's going to go for a walk. Middle of a parking lot, no less. And dad watches him take off, and he's right behind him. And then it goes far enough, and he says, okay, it's time to turn around. I don't want to turn around. That's okay. Turn around. Turn around. He gently, gently guides him around. The little boy, oh, okay. And he's walking this way now, right back to the car. That's human. That's being human. And I have no doubt Jesus has experiences like that. I saw another man in there with his two daughters. One daughter sitting in the car, just had the other one screaming and yelling and hollering and fussing. And he's sitting here trying to, and the little girl that's sitting in the car, just looking around, looking at her sister. You can see it in her eyes. Would you shut up? It's fun. We just look at all this cool stuff. Yeah. That's human. That's being human. On the way here, there's a guy in a car, another car, another car. This guy starts to come over. He changes his mind. This guy gets mad, goes roaring up behind this guy. They slow all down. He has to get back over. He goes over here, comes back, gets up, over to his lane. Thank God there wasn't an accident. That's being human. Impatience. And we all go through this day in and day out. And we get upset and we get frustrated and we think that God doesn't know and God doesn't understand because sometimes we don't truly believe that Jesus was totally, completely, 100%, as you and I are, human. He was. And I think Tripper indicates he still is. He understands everything. We can go to him about anything. We don't have to hold back nothing. No matter how vile, nasty, mean, horrible it might be. Or on the other hand, how wonderful, how kind, how gentle, how loving it can be. You know, Ed, <laughs> he uh, talks about you every time I call now. Uh, we have a conversation and it goes, dum, 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 dum. bye. Every time. I could record it and play the recording, and he probably wouldn't know the difference. You know, but it's, uh, his life is getting towards the end. And because his life is getting towards the end, he can't do a lot of the things he used to do. He is literally, and he understands this, that he is alive because of God. That's given him caregivers and a place to live and the means to finance it. Surely by a miracle. God planned this years and years and years ago, and he understands that. However, he has problems, and he spends all this time with nothing to do but think about his problem. And we always end our prayers with, God understands. Jesus knows what you're going through. Jesus loves you. The Father is proud of you. You spent your whole life putting God first, loving God with the best of your ability, doing everything you can to take care of your wife, your children, your mom. You even got out of the military so people wouldn't die because of you. And no, you are not a coward. You are one of the bravest men I know. I don't know very many men that have as bad an anxiety problem as he has, that have done as much as he's done. And it's because he got out of the military, he has a medical discharge. And that medical discharge bought him his situation he's in now. The military is paying for it all. And I, and I would go with Ed and say, Ed, Jesus knew what you were feeling. He understood how you are. He knows where this is going. And he's got your back. Trust him. And so when, when one of the last things we pray about is, Ed, when you have an anxiety attack, ask the Holy Spirit to bring to your mind 
all the times that you languished and fretted and worried and suffered about anything, and God fixed it. He always fixed it. There's never been a time in your life that he hasn't fixed it. And stop and he thinks, he goes, you're right. There's never been a time in my life that God hasn't fixed it. And and then our last prayer, the very last thing I pray about is, Holy Father, when you come to take Ed home, let him be calm, collected, no worry, no fret, happy as a clam, and take your hand without, without thought. Knowing that his next waking moment, he'll be with Dorothy, his kids, his mom, his dad, all of his buddies from the military that did die during the war. He'll be with them all. Why? Because Jesus was totally and completely human, and he beat it. He lived the perfect life and died for us so that one day we can stand before the Father, and he can say to us, well done, my son, my daughter. You make me pleased. You know, I've said some things today that were hard to say, were hard to even think, were hard to even consider. But it's important that we understand that God did not hold anything back with Jesus. Nothing. He gave us the whole real deal. And he loves us so much. He loves the whole world. I got into a conversation with somebody the other day about how you guys preach lovey-dovey all the time from the pulpit. Yet in the Bible, he wiped out a whole 100,000 people in one day. And over here, he did this. He drowned the whole world. And, you know, how can he be a loving God? I says, well, you have to understand, God deals with the whole world out of his love. We all get the sunshine. We all get the earth. We all get the rain. We all get the natural resources. We all get the oxygen. And that's because God loves the whole world, every human being. But then it comes down to something like enmity. Some human beings become God's enemy, quote, because they hate him. They won't love him. They won't give him the love that he wants from us, that we need to give him so we can be happy. And he treats them differently. Why? Because he wants them to know that he is God and that there are consequences for not loving him. Like Israel, their relationship with God was different than ours. They were a people, a nation, and they were treated differently. If they didn't love him, then he just took his his helping away from them. He allowed them to be conquered. All kinds of things happened. But for us, we are children, very much loved children. We are part of his actual family. We will live forever with Jesus Christ as our big brother, who will understand us forever. One day we'll have a spirit body, and we won't have to worry about the physical part of foolishness that we go through. But still, we'll be human. The soul will still be there. The human soul will still be there. Jesus will still be there. He must have a human soul, too, somehow, some way. How God does it, I don't know. I may never understand it. That's a mystery of God. Lots of mysteries of God. We know some of his truth, but there are so many mysteries that we don't understand and we'll never understand. We might be right. We might be wrong. We have these weird ideas that come and go. But the one thing that never, ever changes is that God loves us. And as we spend our time thinking about how much God loves us, we realize that, man, I really do love God. I really, truly love him like a father. And it brings tears to my eyes to realize that that is a gift. God has given you a marvelous, marvelous gift to love him. And we need to consider that our father, who loves us so much, was willing to give us his own son, 
to make his own son totally, completely human, to experience all the insanity, the vileness, the filth of being human. Let's close with a prayer. Our Holy Father, you are mighty. You are wonderful. You are our Papa. We love you so much, and sometimes we just don't even realize how much we love you. But when we think about what you did for us by sending our Lord Jesus to be totally and completely human in all ways as we are human, that you allowed him to experience what it is to be human, and that he beat it totally, completely, which shows us that it is possible, that if loving, that loving you is the way, putting you first in all of our lives is the way. And so we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his love. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you that he sits at your right hand, that he continually talks to you about each and every one of us, telling you how we feel, why we feel that way, and coming up with wonderful schemes on how to get us to become more like him and how much he loved you. And we, on our part, we pray that we will not get in our own way, that we will do your will as Jesus did, your will, not my will, in all of our lives. And that one of these days, when our time comes, like Larry's, you will take us by the hand and you will bring us home and we will spend eternity with you in that loving, kind, gentle being that you are. And we thank you for all this in the name of the one who you sent to make it possible, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.